Let's get started. Today's topic is advanced groove exercises. Um, and I mean that very literally as in groove exercises from this book. Groove exercises. Last time we were talking, uh, the last lesson on kit, I talked about what the difference is between a beginner and an intermediate drummer. Now I wanna talk about what advanced drummers uh, do differently, how you can practice this in an advanced way. So let's start with some definitions here really quickly. By advanced, I don't mean professional gigging, recording drums advanced. That's like professional. That's you're a pro drummer, you got gigs. What I mean by advanced is advanced students. So typically when I'm teaching and I say students transition to advanced, it's usually, you know, whatever, if they start as a kid, usually when they're about a teenager, you know, when you're in high school, early college, that's when you start to work on more advanced stuff. Maybe you're ahead of that, maybe you're behind that, doesn't matter. Just giving sort of a ballpark idea of what an advanced student profile looks like. If we're gonna practice this, let's say you were my student and I was having you practice this stuff and I would said, okay, you are advanced. You have played this whole book top to bottom, uh, front page to back page, no problem. We're gonna do it again in a more advanced way. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do and that needs to be said is that dynamics are implied from here on out. Meaning you can't get away with this anymore. Unless that's exactly the sound you're going for, that's not an acceptable way to hit your snare anymore. From here on out, it's rim shots. So, you have to play with dynamics if you're gonna play any convincing sounding beat, otherwise it's flat. The second thing, uh, before we get into the exercises, you have to make these grooves come to life. When I was uh, studying drums as a young, a young drummer, my teacher had me play out of this book called Advanced Funk Studies by Rick Latham. Great book, highly recommend it. And there's all these cool beats in it, but he had to keep telling me, like, you need to bring these beats to life. If you're just sitting here playing something, you know, It's cool, but it's not very, it doesn't have much life. It doesn't breathe much, right? It needs to be. You notice I'm adding doubles, I'm adding my foot. Sometimes I'm playing notes louder, sometimes I'm playing notes quieter. It's you need to breathe life into these exercises. If you're sitting here playing exercises, it's just boring. You gotta breathe life into these. Okay, so there's your preamble. Let's get into the actual meat of these exercises. Uh, oh, before I get started, I'm gonna use four example grooves from this book. I'll post a PDF of these, everybody will get it. Uh, we're gonna use four grooves to show this. Number one, sounds like this. I think you guys have heard that beat before. Number two sounds like this. Number three. Number four. So on. Okay, you guys get it. Cool, let's get into it. First thing you're gonna do if you're going through this book again, if you haven't already started doing it, alternate hi-hat patterns, okay? Let's go through maybe five or six of them with each of these beats. So the first alternate hi-hat pattern we're probably gonna wanna do, 16th notes. 
I'll just go ahead and play number one with 16th notes. One, two, three, E, and a four, E, and a. Number two. Number three. Oops, sorry. Number four, two, three, here we go. Okay, you can get uh, pretty creative with 16th note hi-hats. It's not, unless that's the sound you're going for. What you're doing more is push-pull. If you can't get that, you need to work on that. It's just essential. So you can do 16th notes, you can do what I call partials, or the other way. You can do kind of like a shuffle. One, a uh, two, a uh, three, a uh, four, a uh, one, a uh, two, a uh, three, a uh, four. You can, um, let's stick with those, those four for now. I'm gonna go through and play number one through four using these. One and a two and a three and a four. Ready? One, two, three. Number two. Number three. Number four. Got a little extra one in there. Um, cool, pretty pretty straightforward. This is still still sort of intermediate territory, right? So what we do to step it up to advanced level for voice playing? We talked about this last time. That means you get your ride hat, your ride symbol involved. You get your hi hat going on. Well, could be twos and fours, could be quarter notes, could be upbeats, could be eighth notes. So let's take let's take uh, upbeats. One, two, three, four. And then we can get that uh, one and a two and a three and a four, that going on our ride cymbal. And then we play through our exercises. One through four, ride cymbal, left foot uh, upbeats. Ready? One, two, Ready, here we go, and uh. Number two. Number three. Right, still sort of in the intermediate uh, family. Mm. 
This is four voice playing. I have four voices going on, and they're all playing separate things. One, two, three, four. Still kind of intermediate, though. Let's make it advanced and go to five voices. So we've got one, two, right? You've got a bell and a ride. So we've got five voices now. Let's go ahead and play through our exercises. Number one. Number two. Number three. Ghost notes. Number four. Five voices. Can you have six voices? Of course you can. We'll get there. Okay, that's still, we're just taking what's written in the book and putting new stuff over this. And that concept is not super new. Uh, there's a really famous book called The New Breed by Gary Chester. Um, kind of an obscure book. Not as many people do that one. Uh, Dave Weckl talks about it, though. It uses what's called systems, where your hands are doing one thing, and then you read a melody. That's kind of what we're doing here. We've got a system going. And then the melody is going between our, our hands and feet. Another book that's um, pretty popular for this sort of method is Syncopation, obviously. Let's get into a more advanced system, Paradiddles over this. So our hands now are going to be playing paradiddles the whole time. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Okay? We're going to do, let's just stick to number one and two for right now. It gets a little tricky when you start to add in snare sixteenth notes. So number one would sound like this. Number two. Okay, how about four voices? How about number two? How about five voices? Two. Okay. So that's just the first inversion of a paradiddle. That's just right, left, right, right. There's four inversions. There's right, left, left. Oh, sorry. Right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. The second, or that's the second inversion. The next inversion is right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. Then you've got right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. So it's. Each one of those paradiddles has its own vibe, right? So if I was to play, you know, first inversion, here's the next one. Uh, 
Okay, the next one is. Oops, switch it up there. Next one, this one's kind of tricky because it's got the over the bar line thing. Everybody hates this because you got to do tap rim shot. Oh, the worst, right? But got to do it. Uh, so that would sound like with a paradiddle. How do we do this stuff? Because we've already got our right, our left hand on the snare. We put both hands on the hi hat. So now we've got a paradiddle going. And we've got our snare is going to be our left hand. And then ahs and es will be different parts of the diddle. So like. can be a double or you can split it. So that's not really it because that's on the and, so it'd be better to split it like this. So Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just play? Four boys playing, that's why. How about five boys playing? Huge, huge fan of David Garibaldi. His book, Future Sounds, goes over all this stuff super in depth. It will definitely make you a better drummer. Can't recommend it enough. David Garibaldi, drummer for Tower of Power. You should definitely check him out. He does a ton of this stuff with Tower of Power. All that sort of stuff, you know. that forever it's the best it's the most fun okay so we've got basic hi-hat modifications four five voice playing diddle variations one more thing you can start to do if you're an advanced player is start to practice in song forms so instead of playing every exercise four times you should play every exercise as many times as you're going to play it in a song so most songs you play drum grooves for eight bars, right? So you should practice these things as eight bar exercises. And maybe you should go ahead and put fills after maybe eight bars, right? And maybe for the first eight bars, you play a hi-hat groove and for the, then you do a fill. Then for your next eight bars, you play a ride cymbal groove. So let's take, Number one, 
number two and do that. So how about for number one, I'm going to play this hi-hat pattern. For number two, I'm going to do a four voice thing on my ride cymbal. Okay, and let's put a nice easy fill between it. Don't have to do anything crazy. How about something like that, okay? So we've got number one, whatever fill I just played, then number two, and then we'll do our fill going back. You don't have to play the same fill every time, okay? Here we go. One and a two and a number one, here we go. Four more. Here comes our fill. more. Here comes our fill. Whatever it is. Doesn't have to be perfect. The point is you should make up your own ideas and have them be musical. And that's sort of what I would say is maybe the overarching difference between an intermediate player and an advanced player is you stop sounding like somebody who's just going through exercises. You start sounding like somebody who's playing music, right? So techniques you should use for practicing as well is you should practice to music. Clicks are great, metronomes are awesome, but practicing to music is where you're gonna get real good feel. We haven't even talked about feel. So we've talked about dynamics, but we haven't talked about swing, right? So. Right? That's the same groove. Slower and with shuffle. So here's what I'm going to do. I want to make sure that there's actually practicable material. So I'm going to go ahead and play this all one more time so that the YouTube video, when I edit this, has some good, nice, long exercises for you to play with. I'm going to post all of these online and maybe with the variations as well. Okay, variation number one, let's do right hand eighth notes. Variation number two, let's do four voice. And then variation number three, let's do four voices with a second inversion paradiddle. That's. Coolio. All right. Number one, 16th notes, right hand. One E and a two E and a three, here we go. Number two. Number three. Number four. Now we're gonna do one. Left foot is gonna play upbeats. Number one, one E and a two E and a three E, here we go. Number two. 
Number two. Number three. Next, we've got We're going to play that through it. Ready? 1E e and a 2E e number 1. Here we go. And tricky right that's probably a good time as well as any to talk about like look i'm not perfect um nobody's perfect we're always learning so mistakes are going to happen um oh i had one other point too that i want to make before i wrap this up kind of going long today um here's a really important thing if you're an advanced player if you can play this whole book top to bottom, and you can play with all the variations, it's time to get a new book, okay? No one book or one teacher has all the answers. If you only learn from one source, you will only sound like one thing. I'm just one drummer, and I've got all my preferences. I tried to make this book as non-personal as possible, but this is just how I approach things. You need to learn from other teachers, as many teachers as you possibly can. I've played tons of books. I've had lots of lessons with different teachers. I follow just as many drummers on Instagram as you do. Everything is your teacher. So, to recap, the difference between intermediate to advanced drummers, or just what advanced drummers need to be bringing. Dynamics for everything. You need to make rhythms come to life. You can't play boring, non-funky, non... You can't just... You gotta breathe life into your beats. What else? Alternating hi-hat patterns, um, ghost notes, buzzes, all of that stuff. That's all in there. Then four voice playing, five voice playing, practicing in song forms. If you have any questions about this material, please shoot me a DM on Instagram. You can email me at thedrummerbrain at gmail.com. If you need a copy of the book because you can't afford it, because I know we're all going through tough times, email me. But please, honor system. Make sure you actually can't afford it. If you can't afford it, it's like five bucks. Speaking of, I have a Patreon, the drummer, uh, patreon.com slash the drummer brain. I think I'm also going to put like a one-time donation box on the website as well. Uh, you get a free copy of this book if you become a patron. You get a free copy of two books if you become a $10 a month patron. Everybody that's a patron also gets access to AMAs, Q&As, you can probably, once I get through some of this basic material, I'll probably start taking requests for stuff you guys want to cover. So, I think with that, I'm going to leave you, I think I'm going to leave you guys to the rest of your Thursday. 
Happy drums to you. I'll see you Monday for hands. Adios.